Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. I thought I'd come back and do a gifts and pickups video. And some of this footage you'll see was actually recorded a few weeks back, maybe three, four weeks ago. And that was a footage I was alluding to in my last video. We're talking about <clears throat> an hour and 10 minute video. The, the part of it that kind of went over the gifts and everything is what I wanted to preserve that part, which I, I like. I, I looked a little tired. I had some bags in my eyes because I was trying to squeeze that video in with my busy schedule. But I wanted to really do my friends uh, that were extremely generous with these gifts and with their time. And some of them have sent, you know, emails or left very nice comments on my videos. But either way, I'm very much appreciative. Uh, and the gifts are just a step beyond. I'm just continuously uh, in, in awe of how wonderful the community is and how supportive they've been. Some people have been following me since 2012, some uh, just the last six months or so, but <clears throat> either way, I appreciate all my friends and viewers and uh, people that watch my content, you know, regardless of what the reasons are. So, um, <clears throat> I'll get off. Now I'm going to start off because there's some new pickups and a couple things that I've gotten since then. Um, so I wanted to kind of update this with some, some newer stuff and then I'll get into, you'll see the older footage filmed in the same room here pretty much, uh, which I'll preserve. Then I'll come in at the end and wrap everything up. <clears throat> but anyway, I'll start off with, um, I went to a retro store recently, and actually we had two of them. One I've been to, God, five or six times. I really like it. It's called VIP Games in Boise. A great place. Um, the owner's very cool. Uh, it's a little dirty in there. The guy should do a little dusting and cleaning sometimes, but <clears throat> it's a great resource for video games here in town. Sadly, we don't have, like, the big chain of dimples where there's, you know, one store doesn't have the other six will. This is a very small community. You know, you get a half million people or whatever it is. It's not a whole lot of people. And so we're lucky to have anything like this at all. And I'm very thankful that we have the not one, but two little retro stores. One of them has even less stuff to sell, but they also mod consoles and repair consoles, which is, you know, invaluable here in town. So, uh, <clears throat> so I went and tried out this new one. A couple of Christian guys run it. Really nice people in the uh, joining town of Nampa, which is where I work. So because I've been working there, I've been kind of looking at other businesses in, in, uh, in town, restaurants and, um, you know, coffee shops. And, and then I found this video place kind of randomly, but they had some really good old stuff. They had, you know, PlayStation 1 and Super NES and N64. And I could have spent a lot more money and time. My wife was waiting out in the car. It was in a new location, which was like part of a car sales place. Very odd. You're going through this car showroom and then in the corner, there's like a little storefront. It's a very strange place, but you know, regardless, it's a nice little outfit, nice company that these guys have been set up, and they really take pride in how they lay everything out and display. It's just a very small store. There's not a whole lot on offering there, but there is plenty, even for me, there's plenty of things. I can always find something nice to buy, and that's why it's, I, I hate to kind of wrap my collection up, because it is really nice to have <clears throat> a few things left to get. But one of them I found, which I was thrilled, this is a game that I had that was infinitely frustrating at the time, <clears throat> Uh, but I liked it, and that's this Felony 1179. This is a fantastic uh, PS1 game. At the time, I thought it was really cool, the modern. They had the new kind of the Viper-inspired stripes on the Dodge Ram truck. I thought it was really cool. <laughs> and so that kind of sold me the cover on this. I said, oh, i got to get this. But it's kind of like a point A to point B, like running these bizarre errands and this very awkward, strange streets and you got to be careful because of the people and not to hit them and or there's um, tables and chairs you got to go around. it's just weird it's it's very awkward the driving controls are very frustrating and i would be so close to meeting the deadline i hate games with deadlines to this day because of games like this but anyway it's a great game and even if i just dabble with it a little bit i'm really happy to have the felony 1179 in my back in my um you know confines it's great the disc was in great shape came with the manual, you know, the case is a little scuffed up and worn, but that's how a lot of these, you know, older games are. <clears throat> this was a really big, kind of a holy grail for me. This game was the reason why I bought my Super NES. I went over to my friend's house who I <clears throat> had done some work for. Uh, he had a sushi house and a Japanese noodle house, uh, really nice. I did all their signs for the place and 
and we hung out. We'd you know go in the weekends. We'd go over each other's place and watch movies and what have. We had the back then our big Brewer projection TV, which was like the big thing. You know, they looked terrible <laughs> compared to today's TVs. But I was enthralled with how big it was. And he had this game Wing Commander playing on it with a, at the time was a new then new you know I think it was ninety one or whatever um, Super NES. And I'm like, wow, dude, this is a new game system that came out. Wow, I've, I've seen that on TV. And he just, I was enthralled. I thought this was like Star Wars, you know, with the graphics of this being inside the spaceship and the space 3D combat. And I, I had to have one. I went up the very next day and bought this game and a Super NES, and I eventually discovered other games on it as well. But I never played any of the cutesy Mario games or any of that kind of stuff. All I played was like Wing Commander and Outlander and uh, F-15 Strike Eagle. I had a lot of strange, odd games. Those are the games that I like, which thank God, a lot of them are relatively inexpensive to buy today. But this game was a little pricey because it was in the original box, but it's complete. With it. it has the manual and the cartridge and everything. So I had to have it, even if I get no other N60, um, or if I don't get no other uh, Super NES games, at least I have this one in a nice box. The other ones, I don't care if they're loose cartridges, but you know, I wouldn't mind having a couple, and I think I've got Out Outlander too, in a box as well, but it's just nice having a couple games. You know, I'm the type where it'd be nice to have them all factory sealed and own all the boxes, you know, but I, I don't care. I, if I can have just a couple, two or three, I'm happy. I don't have all the tall boxes for the PlayStation 1 either, but it's nice to have some of my favorites, and that's kind of how my whole collection is, is that I have a lot of just random games. Some of them I don't care if they're in greatest hits packages. It really doesn't matter if they're a little worn or scuffed up or there's damage on the manual. I mean, I'm, I don't nitpick as long as the game's in good shape and it works and there's a, a rough semblance of what the game looked like at one time in the original packaging, it's nice. If I can get them super clean, of course, it's even nicer, but I'm not overly hung up on that. But to have a couple nice games in the original boxes for the Super NES or for the N64 I think would be kind of cool. This is a game that has got mixed reviews, but I had to have it as a huge Star Trek fan. That's Star Trek Shattered Universe. I mean, I've had a hell of a time trying to find this. But the guy at the other VIP game store, the bigger game store, I asked him for this game the first time I was here, and he laughed at me. He goes, God, I haven't seen that thing in ages. He said, good luck finding that. But here it was, and it was all complete and in great shape. I was really thrilled to, to find this. So this is one of my favorite. I have Star Trek and Encounters as well, which is pretty, another recommended game on the PS2. Or it might be in the Xbox too, I'm not sure. Um, this is kind of a, a crap game made by the guys that made the Rambo game as well as the Terminator Resistance game. And that's Heavy Fired Shattered Spear. This is a really interesting kind of a rail shooter. This is like something you'd play in an arcade with like a light type gun. But instead of a light gun, um, it just has a just strange, you know, I don't think it has the inverted aim in this either, if I remember right. But I played this a long time ago. It's not the greatest game, but I, I like to collect military games. And because it's such a unique game, <clears throat> and I, I rarely come across it, I had to have it. Uh, so anyway, that's just a few pickups at that one place of four games. And then I've got, just recently, I've got a few things. Um, <clears throat> I found, I, you know, just should, you'll see in, in um, the other video I'm about to show, I, I get picked up Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts. Well, they just came out with the Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 for 40 bucks for $39.99. I thought it was a hell of a deal. So I went down to GameStop, and I was just popped by yesterday. I had about 10 minutes to kill before I went to the store, and I just wanted to go in there, and I'll just kind of randomly look. They had the um, Hot Shot Driving, which I almost... Got Hotshot Racing, whatever it is. My friend Steve has it and has raved about it. <clears throat> and I don't have that one yet, but now I, I know where it is. I can always go back and get it. But I had to renew my rewards uh, subscription where I get the Game Informer magazines, which is nice. Now that I'm here, I get them in California. The mail guys used to steal them. I'd get maybe one out of four magazines. And I asked someone, one of the mail carriers, what the deal is. Just sometimes if the carriers like the, the magazines, they just keep them. They don't even give them to people. I was like, really? Like, wow, that's interesting. Because of that, I no longer ship U.S. mail. I'll gladly pay more for UPS or FedEx because I just that's just totally not cool. And after what happened with the election, a lot of people were dumping, you know, whole bags of ballots for one candidate. <clears throat> 
you know, in the gutters and the street and what have you. I mean, I just, I want to abide by that. So I, I really don't use the U.S. mail any more than I have to. But anyway, I'm getting way off topic here. But <clears throat> so I, anyway, I found the Sniper uh, Ghost Warrior 2 con Contacts, which is a great game. I'm <clears throat> real happy with this. Um, I, I could, I guess I could go on GameStop.com and order games and have them delivered, but I'm nervous about the delivery. I've had so many problems with packages, but anyway, what, I'm, what I was saying is that since I've moved to Boise, now I get every single issue of my Game Informer. I don't know if the people are just more ethical here or no one's stealing my magazines, but I had to fight with that constantly in <laughs> Sacramento. And I'd have to go down to my actual GameStop and then wish that they, or hope that they've got one of the actual magazines. And so they'd give you one. Oh, here, Dean, if you didn't get, you know, this month's magazine, here's a copy of it. Sometimes I'd get them, sometimes I'd, I'd miss out if they didn't have any to give me. But this ought to be really cool. I, I love the first two games, and I have Sniper Ghost Warrior 3, and I've yet to play that one yet. I really want to play it and Contracts, but I love what I've seen with it. It looks like more of a continuation of the first one, almost like this is an expansion, but... Either way, it's a great uh, series because I like the Sniper Elite series so much. This is kind of a close second. It's really cool when they've got these kind of dramatic slow motion kill shots, which I think are pretty cool. <clears throat> I have looked everywhere for this game, and that's Dirt 5. Uh, I should have just pre-ordered the damn thing. But for whatever reason, I didn't. And I have never, ever seen this at the two or three game stops we have here in town. I look, and I look, and I look, and I ask, no, we don't have it. And so I was really bummed out. Well, they had a grocery store of all places that had this, where they have a strange series of uh, chain of grocery stores here where they actually sell like furniture and hardware and televisions and video games and DVDs and Blu-rays. But they actually they had this and they had a lot of other rare games that I have a hell of a time finding. My friend found a, a Nintendo Switch, a good one, there where he couldn't get him to save his life. He went down to this grocery store and there was a switch brand new in the box sitting on the shelf and he jumped on it five four hundred four or five hundred bucks whatever it was but um if i had to pay full price for this that you know it might have been discounted at gamestop by now but this is really a good game from everything i've seen on it, it looks like more of a continuation of dirt 2 which is my favorite in the series really colorful really good action racing and, and drama and this looks like a return to two, which to me is my favorite of all the Dirt games. I didn't care for three and four. I hate it so much because of the procedural generated tracks. I, I like tracks that are designed by artists, not by a damn computer randomly. So it's you know you can obviously see telltale signs that it's just the same little stretch of road, just kind of sawed up and jumbled around. I, I don't like that. So I like <clears throat> road courses that were hand designed and hand picked and drawn and digitized and all that but anyway this looks really good and it has a lot of different modes you can play as i'm very anxious to play this um did i get anything else let me see not i got one cd and that's the greatest hits of mega death I, I thought i had this but i apparently i didn't and i have that p cells um uh, song which stuck in my head i was listening to it on the serious radio on the ozzy's boneyard they play a lot of mega death and <clears throat> Metallica and you know Judas Priest and all this stuff. Well, I'd forgotten all the great songs that Megadeth did, and that piece sells always. I get that stuck in my head every time I play uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and I even have all of the the Vice City CDs, including the V Rock one, and that's one of the, my favorite songs on that on V Rock. So this was dirt cheap, like eleven or twelve bucks. It came brand new, factory seal. It's got like a shitload of hits on it. How many hits? It's got like. 17 songs on it. That's not bad. So, really good. Great listening. Now I just got to figure out how to get a CD player in my truck and I'll be all set. <clears throat> so just a few pickups here on top of the ones I'm about to show, which you'll see, you know, a lot more. Um, my friend Al that sent me The Days Gone knew that I wanted, uh, what is one of the games I wanted, uh, the Modern Warfare reboot, which I never got a chance to play. That's another one I'd look for locally and just, they're out of it, new or used. Um, is that Modern Warfare. Well, he just sent this to me. got it through, I think it was Walmart.com, and they just delivered it to my front door. And Al, thank you so much. This is extremely thoughtful of you. Uh, I told him the one game was enough. I said, you don't have to send any, any more games, dude. But he, wanted, he, he knew I wanted to play this and missed out on it. <clears throat> you know, I love that Black Ops Cold War game quite a bit. And uh, everything I've seen on the, you know, I don't care for the multiplayer stuff, but I, I really like the single-player campaign from what I've seen of this, so I'm anxious to play this. 
think it's got the Captain Price guy back and what have you. I like the Call of Duty series. The only one I'm missing, I think, is Black Ops 3. The fourth one I won't play because it's an online-only game, but <clears throat> i got to get the Black Ops 3. Just I know it's weird and kind of way out there, but I kind of like to have that one in my collection. So those are recent, um, very recent, you know, on top of the ones I'm about to show. <clears throat> so hopefully you uh, enjoy this. Um, here goes. I'm going to segue right now into this, this section that I've already done. My friend Al has been following me on YouTube for some time. He sent me his copy of Days Gone. He already finished the game. I don't know if he beat it more than once, but he, I know he played it at least once, if not a couple times, and loved it. Dean, have you played this yet? you got to play it. So he sent me his copy. Thank you, Al. I really appreciate this. This is one of the games I wanted to get. Instead, I bought Rage 2. It came out the same time, so I bought it. But <clears throat> I'm anxious to get to this. It looks perfect. And now that they fixed a lot of the bugs via patches and updates, it's a lot more f fun of a game. My good friend uh, Mario, I think he's over in Belgium, and he's been following my channel for a while, and I see him on my friend Jeremy's channel. He follows a couple of the channels that I follow, and he's really good. He sends me a lot of um, messages via, you know, the PlayStation 4, you know, network thing on there. So when I get home, quite often I'll see a message from him. I'm always anxious to open it up and see what he has to say. And, and uh, he's going through some work transitions where he's you know, starting a new job, I think, too. So we've been, you know, shooting the shit about that. Well, he knew that I liked the Mafia game when it came out. I don't have it, the copy of it here. I've got to put away. But I really enjoyed the, the beginning salvo of missions with the Mafia game. And he said that there they had the, uh, uh, the Mafia trilogy in a physical condition. Now, I have Mafia 2, the digital remastered one, as a digital game only, and you can get Mafia 3, which I have, and you can easily upgrade to the definitive edition, which I think it's the same damn game, but but I, it bummed me out that you couldn't get them on disc, all of them. I thought that they should have had a package here in America, but they do in the UK. So he was very nice enough for Christmas to send me the Mafia Trilogy in a really handsome box, and you take it out, and it came with a huge poster, which I'll show here. Uh, in fact, I kind of laid the poster out. I put some other magazines on top of it to kind of weight it down and get the wrinkles out of it. So I'm ready to, uh, to frame it. I just need um, a little bit bigger kind of a poster board to mount it on so that it will fit in that size frame because it was kind of a unique size. But anyway, it's a Mafia trilogy. It comes in this really handsome box with all three discs. It's a wonderful wonderful setup. It's so nice having these on discs. Mario, thank you so much, bud. This is a, a wonderful gift that I will cherish for some time. So <clears throat> really delighted to have this, even though I already have the other physical copies of Mafia 3 and the Mafia reboot that came out recently. It's just nice to have them in a box set for the shelf. You can see it's got the PAL, you know, thing on the corner, on the bottom down there, the maturity warning or whatever the hell it is. Um, so that's a really cool game to the shelf now to put on my shelves. And then I had um, my good friend Michael in New York. He sent me some really wonderful uh, gifts every once in a while. And we've been chatting a lot on, via texting, you know. He's very technical and he's really into modding. He's trying to build or mod his PlayStation 1 right now to where you can, instead of it reading off a disc, you can have like, kind of, I don't know if it's emulation or what, but... Um, and I've got a couple fat PS1s that, that would be perfect candidates for that. So he's going to help me mod one of those, which I'm really excited about. But in the meantime, he sent me some wonderful things for Christmas. I never saw this coming. He watches all of my Escape to Gaming you know, videos and he even watches the Escape to Cinema ones. And he knew that I had loved Star Wars. So he sent me all three of the original Star Wars on Blu-ray before George Lucas made the changes to them that everyone's so upset over the, you know, uh, frankly, I like them. I like the changes. A couple of them I could have done without, but overall, I like the fact that Lucas had gone through and tried to fix a lot, some of those um, special effects in particular. But these are the originals before then. So you get, you know, Return of the Jedi. I mean, I saw all of these the day they came out. And this is the original Star Wars. So you can see all of these with the, with the original special effects before the, George Lucas changed them. Uh, so it's wonderful having these. Michael, thank you so much for these, bud. These are the gifts that we'll keep on giving. I still haven't watched these yet. I've got a huge Star Wars collection. I already have the movies 
on Blu-ray, the trilogy and the prequels. I've got those. And then I've got all of the, um, <clears throat> the prequels on DVD. But these have a lot of behind the scenes things. I don't know that they're in the newer ones, but hours of behind the scenes and how they made the prequels, it's really good. And then I have the one that has the something of dreams. This is the bonus material that came with the original um, original trilogy on DVD. This has all of the behind the scenes stuff and how they made all of the Star Wars films. It's like a three hour you know documentary, or whatever. So. It's nice having all these Star Wars films in one place, and then I also have all of the um, the Clone Wars. These are kind of heavy. I've got all the Clone Wars and the Star Wars Rebels box sets, and I just sent Jeremy. I sent him. Um, is Rebels here? Yeah, here. These first four here are Rebels. I just sent Jeremy all four of these uh, as a gift for you know his birthday. He just got, he likes them so much that he went out and got all of the Star Wars, um, Clone Wars, uh, little animated, kind of Pixar type animations are really good. I was really surprised. And Star Wars Rebels is even another notch up from that. So they're making the, the bad, the big, the bad batch or something it's called, which is kind of a takeoff from the, the Clone Wars of one of the dynamics that was in there. So, Michael, thank you very much for the Star Wars things. He also sent me, this is something he knows I really like, is this is the limited run games, and it's a Star Wars um, Jedi Outcast, which is one of my favorite games for Raven Software, and Je Jedi Academy. So these, is, these are both. I already had them, but it's just nice to have the physical copies of both, especially... Um, the Jedi Outcast. I think the level design is better in this, but Jedi uh, Academy, there's a lot of things you can do with the RPG elements you can do within this, the Force, and then it comes with these nice, you know, they're like playing cards from limited run games. I don't know what they signify, but something that comes with it. But Thank you, Michael. This is a wonderful treat. In fact, he's ordering me, which I'm gonna, I, I told him that I'll, I'll, I'll pay for it, but I, he's gonna get me a, um, since I don't follow the limited run thing, He's going to get me the uh, Republic Commando, which I just bought off the PlayStation Network. He's getting me a physical release, which hasn't come out yet, but it's he's pre-ordered it, so which is going to be nice. They had a really expensive one with all this extra stuff. I just got the vanilla $40 one, but just to have a physical copy of some of my favorite Star Wars games, kind of upscaled on you know HD for the PlayStation 4, which is very cool. I think they're on the Switch, too. <clears throat> so anyway, I got those. Uh, wonderful Star Wars related gifts. Thank you, Michael, for those. They really mean a lot to me. And um, we're, we're talking about modding the PlayStation 3 to where they can't, you don't have to worry about that clock thing going out and then losing your rights to do it. So if you jailbreak them, I guess you can continue to play. And the problem is you can no longer connect with a you know PlayStation store. So you better get whatever you're going to get and get it in that hard drive. You do it now and then you can alter it to where you'll forever have it not have to worry about the licensing or that because of trophy support you know again i'm not into the achievements and trophy thing but because of that it's all tied to this you gotta, it has to sync with the playstation clock and if it does that then you can continue to see and play your game so there's a lot of videos on that there's a lot of conflicting information but there are ways around it and for the playstation 4 as well the playstation 4 in some ways is even worse so all those you know thousands of games that I've got or hundreds, whatever it is, and a lot of those digital games that I've bought and off the PlayStation Store, I mean, you, you literally could lose those. They can just shut the servers off and then you can't update those and you'll be kind of fucked, even if you have the physical disc. So, um, <clears throat> I've got a good friend, Vinny. He's in Idaho Falls. We, you know, we've talked on the telephone a few times and send each other text and uh, he's aligned with my political... Um, uh, ideology for the most part. So we've we really enjoyed conversing on everything from gaming and then we talk about politics and our homes and what have you as well. But he sent me a really nice gift at Christmas. Vinny, I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to, to show these gifts. I mean, I, I wanted to show them right away and I just, the timing was never good for making a video like, like this. So I wanted to sit down and show them now. But he sent me the Strange Brigade. He knows that I want, that I like this Rebellion Studios. And so this is a game I've wanted. I even went out and I bought online all the DLC for this, all the extra missions and characters and weapons and everything. 
He sent me a, a Titanfall 2 for the um, Xbox One or Xbox One X that I have. Uh, the copy of Prey as well. This is another wonderful game which I've heard quite a bit about. In fact, I think I had the PlayStation 4 version of this. I think I'll have to look. I think I already have it on the PS4, but I, I'm glad to have it on the Xbox. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so he even has a little Merry Christmas thing. And then he sent me this PS2 game that's called The Getaway that he said, Dean, you got to play this. It's really a great game. You know, I've seen this on the shelf for years and never bought it, never tried it. So it's nice to be able to play this. Thank you so much, Vinny. Uh, he spends Vinny with a, spells it with a Y, and I spend Vinny my cat, I, sp I spell it with an I-E at the end, but he's a great friend. I really appreciate it. And so he sent these games. Oh, and then he sent one more. The, um, I don't know my glasses when I can read this. This is Yakuza 6, the, six, the Song of Life. Brand new, really nice game. But I have a couple friends of mine. Uh, Chad, the gaming dad, uh, is another one that he's, he loves these Yakuza games. And we've talked about them a few times. So it'll give me a chance to, you know, to, to try it out and to see what all of the hubbub is over the Yakuza series because a lot of people just love them. They, they just rave about them. So that's those gifts there. Really wonderful gifts. Thank you, Vinny, so much. We gotta, we're going to hook up one of these days and get together. He's maybe four or five hours away, but... I'm slowly, I, you know, I went to Twin Falls recently to get my new truck, and, and I'm kind of now I'm kind of get going to other places, other towns in Idaho, so it's nice to see what's out there. So that's, oh, and I still have some more here. I've got um, uh, my good friend Steve, who sent me my Xbox One X, and has been so generous in helping me get, you know, up to speed with the Xbox One X. He sent me Mad Max, which I've had for a while now, but I wanted to physically, you know, show these that that his last batch of games he sent he got a deal on a buying a whole bunch of games with a, a i think it was a ps4 pro and the guy threw in a bunch of games so he said dean are any of these that you want and this is the only one i really wanted was far cry primal so he sent me the far cry primal now i've got all the far cry games uh sunset overdrive is another one he says dean you got to play this it's really good it's an exclusive for the xbox one and this is one he knew that i wanted and that's at rise son of rome this I'm really excited to play, and this probably still to this day has some of the best graphics I have ever seen on a console. Really impressive. So thank you very much, Steve, for these. Uh, you know, he's been a great friend. We, we just talked over the, in fact, yesterday we sent a salvo of text, and usually on the weekends, every other week or so, you know, we'll try to catch up. But it's a shame because we used to live close enough to have lunch together and stuff, and we just haven't had that in a while. Uh, my good friend Cameron of Industrial Gamer down in Southern California, he sent me some um, gifts too. These are, um, he said, Dean, you can use these on your Xbox One X. He sent me the 4K Blu-ray of Gladiator, which I have. Now, I have the original, uh, just the DVD of this. I haven't upgraded this to Blu-ray yet, but this is a 4K Blu-ray. And I, I've never tried it, but I can, I downloaded the, um, you have to download the thing through Microsoft where you can convert your thing into a player to play them, but I've already got that ready to go. He sent me this um, Blue Planet, which is a beautiful thing of Earth, of just some of the gorgeous beauty and wonder of the things that are on the planet. And this is like a really good uh, showpiece of just to show you how great the 4K up, you know, um, imagery is. And then he sent me this new movie, which I haven't seen yet, called 1917. It's a World War I film. Uh, it looks really good. You know, this is, a, again, this HD, four times the resolution of just a standard Blu-ray, as good as that is. So, Cameron, thank you very much. Your gift, not once, but twice, it's been on back order. Every time I try to order it, it's been on back order. So I'm just going to, you know, I don't want to get you a used one. I know you like new stuff, so. Um, and that's the only other option is I can get you a used one, but <clears throat> I, I'm going to try to find you a new one, or I'll just get you, send you something else. So sorry that your gift hasn't got there yet late or hasn't got there yet. I had my wife try to get it via uh, eBay, and it just twice it's fell through. They said oh, they were going to send it, and then they said, oh, it's on back order. So <clears throat> life on the Internet right now with a pandemic, nothing has been the way it was, you know. So those are, anyway, the, those are the gifts. Oh, no, my friend Jeremy, too, he sent some gifts. Now, I finally got that package from him, which I uh, sent him the money for. The, he's been slowly, that's what he does. He'll, over the course of six months or so, he'll accumulate a whole bunch of games, and when it, comes out to be about 100 to 100 and a half. He'll say, okay, Dean, it's in, I've got it in a box. I can send it for this much money. And then I send him the money for the shipping and the games. 
Well, he threw in a bunch of games with it. And this is this one he sent separately with a really nice Christmas card. Thank you, Jeremy, for the card and for the little letter that came with it. Uh, he sent me this. He knows I really like the Command and Conquer series. So he sent me this Red Alert PlayStation 1 game. It's like the twin pack. So this is where it all started. And I want to go back to the roots of this series because I never played the PS1 versions of the game, only on the Xbox 360. So I've got that. He knew I wanted this game. This is C12 Final Resistance for the PlayStation 1. This is one of my biggest holy grails. I've been trying to find one of these. I've just never come across them. Thank you, Jeremy, for that. Really appreciate it. He sent me this Broken Helix. This is one he thought I would like. Looks like another FPS game. Really cool PlayStation 1 game. Delta Force Urban Warfare. This is another one he thought that I would really like. U.S. Army's elite, defined by their expert combat skills, physical and mental toughness. This looks really good. So, Jeremy, thanks. He, he knows what I like, and he, and he sent me this Roll Cage game, which I've seen quite a bit of but have never played for the PlayStation 1. Very nice gifts. He knew I wanted a copy for the PlayStation 4 of this slight newly remastered um, Metal Wolf Chaos XD, it's called. So you can get it digitally, but this is nice to have the physical edition of this. Thank you, Jeremy. I've really been anxious to play this. You play as the President of the United States in like a mech suit, and you get all these weapons, and you can just, you know, instead of having the Pentagon do your bidding for you, you just take care of shit yourself. It's pretty cool. We had a president like that, but uh, he got cheated, sadly. But <clears throat> anyway, Metal Wolf Chaos looks pretty cool. Um, Titan Quest. Uh, looks like a great game. He knows I like some of those Roman gladiator type games. And so he's, he got me this. Um, oh, he sent me the Army. He's, he collects all the Army Men games. He sent me Army Men RTS, real-time strategy. This is a wonderful GameCube game. So now I've got another game for my GameCube. I don't have too many, but I've got some. And he, he knows I love the Lost Planet series. He sent me this really special edition steel case of Lost Planet. What's it called? Extreme... Condition and it has a bunch of expansion packs and DLC on disc, which is very cool. So, Jeremy, these are he went above and beyond as usual. He's been so good to me. That's why I sent him those um, bottom that Star Wars Rebel series because it's the least I can do for him. But he sent me these along with it. These are the things that I had asked him to get for me. So now he finally got me the um, Star Wars Episode One Battle for Naboo, which is on the um, on the Super NES. I'm sorry, on the N64. And then he's got me Star Wars Rogue Squadron. This is another major holy grail for the N64. So now I have all of the Star Wars games. I have the other two here, Shadow of the Empire and Pod Racer, Episode One Racer. So now I have all four uh, Star Wars games for the N64. And then I also have both of the Duke Nukem Zero Hour and Duke Nukem 64, so I'm really thrilled about that. I'm slowly getting my N64 collection up. Um, I've been looking for another analog TV. They're either in really shitty condition or they're just too big for me to lift. So I'm trying to find like a 19 or 20 inch, which I'm having a problem finding. I keep finding coming across big 27 inch ones and bigger, but I really want to get a smaller TV. I've got space out in my garage for about a 20 inch, and that's what I'd like to find, but we'll see. Uh, I had Jeremy get me the uh, Duke Nukem Total Meltdown. This was the last Duke Nukem game that I, that I wanted to get uh, for my collection. So now I have Land of the Babes, and I also have Time to Kill. I sent um, Silver Wings 21, my other copy of this. Uh, so I've got all three of the, of the um, Duke Nukem PlayStation 1 games. Thank God. These are my major holy grails, my favorite games for the... Uh, for the PlayStation 1 was Duke Nukem, Land of the Babes, and Time to Kill. Both really good games. He sent me, this is getting hard to, hard to find. You rarely come across these. Ironically, last night at my GameStop, they had one. So I had Jeremy find me a, a Rico game for the PlayStation 4. He's got really good connections for gaming. Uh, I had him send me um, the Fast and Furious. I think this was called... Something of drifting. It's in Japanese, but uh, the Fast and Furious drift, drifting game is kind of hard to find. But this is one that people say this is the best of, of all of the um, uh, Fast and Furious games. 
There's a lot of licensed games. One of them came out recently. It's got terrible reviews. But this is one of the good ones. And it comes, comes with a gorgeous manual in full color, really big, thick manual. It's a great game, so I'm really happy to have. This is kind of like a hidden gem deal if you're into racing games. I'm really happy to have that one. Far Cry um, Instincts Predator. This is a, a special edition, kind of like an HD collection of original Xbox games that were on the, on the Xbox 360. This is something I've wanted for some time. Jeremy found me one. It has two games in one. So you get uh, the Far Cry Instincts, and there was another one. I can't remember what it was called. It was um, Far Cry Instincts with an Enhanced Edition. Uh, and then there's another one that comes with two. I can't remember what the other one is. But anyway, you get both of the original. I have them both for the original Xbox. But you get both games upscaled for the Xbox 360. And then he sent me another. So when I sent Gabe Cameron, I'm an industrial ga gamer, I sent him one of my modded perfect condition Xboxes that had the bigger hard, it had a 160 gig hard drive I had installed. So you can have maybe a dozen to 15 games you could rip to it. Not much, but but still it was nice. And I even had all of the coin ops eight installed in there for him. He's got with thousands and thousands of games. So, but I, I wanted to give him at least one Xbox game with it. So I had a like a really mint condition Doom 3 steel box edition just like this. So I had Jeremy find me another one. This one is a little worn compared to the one that I had, but I'm just happy to have it back in the collection. One of my favorite games. I've played all through this. I love this game. And sometimes the originals are the best, so I get nervous with all this stuff on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. These older games, you know you can play, but it's, it's you know, these new ones, it's, it's getting tricky. We're going to find ways around it, though, and I'm confident that the tech community is hard at work. They're even creating a way that you can have all your updates and saves and save them to a PC, put them on a thumb drive, and somehow get them into your system, so... I'm excited to find out more about that. But anyway, that's, those are the things I got from uh, Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy, and I have one more thing. He got me the official, which I used to have, Land of the Babes official strategy guide. This is going way up in price. This is shooting up in price. These are hard to get now. So now I have all three of them for the PlayStation 1. Land of the Babes, the Total Meltdown guide, which I got not long ago I found locally here, and then Duke Nukem Time to Kill. So now I've got all the strategy guides and the games together. So, and speaking of strategy guides, <clears throat> I found some, uh, I bought a few things myself, and I'll show those things now. Uh, I have a, a wonderful, I bought like a pile of strategy guides already, and I've shown them in an earlier video, but I found one for the club um, recently, a great game. It's kind of like a, made by the, I think it's the Criterion guys, or I can't remember. It was made by one of the racing company games that made a lot of the racing games and they made one where it's like a shooter and it's your like your time and you see how fast you can go through and clear out a building or whatever it's pretty cool but this shows you all the ways backwards and forwards through the game very cool i love these ghost recon guides a lot of i have tons of these tom clancy games and guides that match i got ghost recon thunder island which i've got the original xbox copy of ghost recon um this was just the ghost recon with the original one and then I have the Rainbow Six Lockdown Guide, Rainbow Six Three Guide, and then uh, Rainbow Vegas. I think this is an Xbox 360 game. So I've got all of those I've found. Um, and then I found, I already had, when I had the first game my wife got me from my PlayStation 3 was the Resistance Fall of Man. And I, she got me the guide to go with it. And then I stumbled across for like $2, all these guides for $2.99 each. Uh, Resistance 2 for two bucks. Hell of a deal. So all I need is a third gu guidebook and then I'll have all the guides for Resistance. So I got a few guides, you know. I'm always happy to find new guides. And then I got a few games over the last few months. Every time I go, I'll find at least one game. So I've slowly ac accumulated a few things. Let me find it. I'm drinking my soda here. I'm really thirsty. found the original Just Cause for the Xbox 360. This is the only one I haven't played. And I think four, the, the latest. But uh, <clears throat> this I've wanted for some time. Really happy to finally find that and have it in the collection. Gears of War Judgment, one of the only Gears of War games that I haven't played and that I don't have in my collection. 
Jeremy just gave me the digital codes for a whole bunch of um, Gears games, including Judgment, which I installed on my Xbox One X. But <clears throat> it's nice to have the disc. I just nice having it. And then I finally found this um, Kane's Wrath Command and Conquer. I have not been able to find this for the longest time, so now I have all three of these um, you know, Command and Conquer games for the Xbox 360 in my collection. I'm just really stoked about that. I, I want to get back into those. I, you know, I played those years ago, <clears throat> some of those Command and Conquer games, and I had a blast with them. I mean, you can just spend weeks just playing those little top-down strategy games. Really cool. But anyway, so I got a few other things. I've got um, Just Cause 3. I found this like just a few bucks, really dirt cheap. And then I downloaded all the DLC for it as well. <clears throat> um, oh, and then I got, these were getting them in order here. Then I got Far Cry New Dawn. I haven't even played 5 yet, but this is the sequel to 5. And a different way it's played with the RPG elements and with the, uh, the XP system. And when you shoot, you have to match your XP up with the, the XP of the enemy. So otherwise, if you shoot over guys at a higher level than you, you get your ass kicked. But it looks really good anyway, even with the changes. So I'm anxious to play this. And then I got Void Bastards. <clears throat> I watched the um, Carrot at ACG did a good review of this, and it looked really intriguing. So all kind of been, you know, cell shaded animated type style, but very cool and a very unique game. Uh, and then I've got, I just last night I found Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts, which I have digitally. I bought for like a few bucks, seven or eight bucks, really cheap digitally on one of those PlayStation sales. But I want to get the physical game, and I even have the DLC I bought for this. And then I've got uh, Batman the Tell Telltale Game Series, The Enemy Within. Now, I believe this is the second chapter, so I have to find the first one. Um, hopefully it's on the PlayStation 4. I, I can't remember, but I want to look for that next and get it. So I've got a few games I've bought uh, recently. And then I found last night The Empire of Sin. This is a um, John Romero game, one of the original pioneers of the Doom series. And he went to Ireland with his wife, and they started a little game studio. So it's him and some other people that have put this together. I love RTS, real-time strategy games, and it's kind of mixed with an RPG. It really reminds me of The Godfather on the original Xbox, and later you can, I bought the Xbox 360 HD version, but I played it on the, the Xbox. My, my God, I probably have 160 hours in The Godfather game. I mean, a lot of hours. This looks just like it, and it even has the map design, looks like The Godfather 2, with a little top-down view of the map, some kind of primary colors, and when you take over a section. There's many different ways you can play this, but this looks really good. Initially, it had a lot of bugs at launch, which is unfortunate, but they, it's been, a lot of it's been patched out, and I think it's pretty good to play, so I'm really excited about playing this. This is probably the next one I'm going to start playing. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I have to install it tonight and then start playing it. It looks really good. I love the little top-down graphics, and each of the people, they have really good character voices that go with each character. There's multiple, like 15 different characters you can play as. It's just really beefy. If you're really into a good RPG deal, you might want to check that out. The reviews are so-so because initially it was quite buggy, but it seems to be patched and fixed now. Uh, so those are the games that I have. I also got, just I found recently, this Yellowstone. I took a chance and we rented via Netflix on disc. This series, it was so good, the first disc, I said, fuck it, let's just buy all of them. And this is a series I'll watch. I think it was a Showtime exclusive uh, series. So I got season one, season two, and season three of this great, we're on the second season right now. My wife and I both really like this. Reminds me of living here in Idaho, which instead it takes place in Montana. Really a good series with Kevin Costner, great acting. So I don't know where I left off. I was just, I pretty much showed you the game. Oh, I showed this TV series, The Yellowstone. It's really good, highly recommended. If you want a good, you know, adult drama, it's quite, quite well done. It kind of reminds me of um, the other show we've been watching is um, Ozark, which is pretty good. It's kind of like a Breaking Bad clone, but quite good. I've been watching those as well. But anyway, those are the games and a few pickups that I have. Uh, over the last few months. Not a tremendous amount, but more than enough. I, my, my list is getting down there. I don't have a whole lot left. I, I have bought some digital games as well, which I have a few here. I'll mention um, 
Old Man's Journey I just got the other night. Looks really good little indie game, kind of like a little story-based game. Quite good. My friend Pedro, which was on the Switch, eventually they had it for the PlayStation 4, so I bought that digitally. Star Wars Republic Commando just bought last week uh, digitally. Riptide GP2. I had the first one. It's a really good kind of like a kind of like Jet Moto in a way. Very cool, but with better graphics. Uh, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. I already have it for the PlayStation 4, but I wanted it. It was dirt cheap, like four bucks for a game. Excuse me. So I got it for the Xbox One just to have it digitally. I can always play it on that. <clears throat> Call of the Sea, uh, a really cool, kind of like a miss game. Um, I got that one. Uh, Abduction is another one that's very similar to that, that reminds me of it. But it looks really colorful and quite good. It's kind of an Xbox and PC exclusive. It's not on the PlayStation 4, but still a nice game. I had to have that. Gears Judgment, which I just mentioned via G Jeremy. Um, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts, I had already had it digitally, dirt cheap, and I wanted the physical copy. Vanquish, a great game. I've got the digital version. There is a one with Bayonetta, I believe. You can get it like a, a twin pack on disc. I'm eventually I'll try to find that if I can. Rogue Ace is a fun little uh, shooter, kind of like a little airplane shooter you can play. Uh, Bully, I got a new version of that for the PlayStation 4, just to have it along with all my other PS2 Rockstar games. Uh, Star, Star Wars Pod Racer, the N64 one that came out for the, um, uh, I already have the Racer's Revenge for the limited run games, a physical copy, but this is a, came out, it was an N64 game that they re, kind of remastered for the PlayStation 4, a really great game, I'm thrilled to have that. Beat Cop, a really cool story-based game, playing as a cop, you can play as a good cop or bad cop, it's really cool. Uh, I got that, and then the game Journey, I think it was free for the PlayStation 4. Uh, I've got a bunch of DLC, Homefront the Revolution, I got the expansion packs for that, Far Cry 4, I finally got all the expansions for that. Wreckfest, I bought the Season 2 Pass, it's, I've been enjoying that, that's a game I've been playing a lot of, is Wreckfest. It just never gets old, I go in there, if I'm tired, I just want to play for a half an hour to an hour, it's a great game to play. Star Wars Squadron, still haven't tried it yet, but I got the DLC for that. I think it came free, it didn't cost anything. Dirt Rally 2.0, I, I spent, they had a really good sale at PlayStation Store, and I got the expensive season pass for dirt cheap. And got all the cars and all the other tracks, uh, which are, I'm dying to play all of the other tracks. That one's one of my favorite go-to, really tough driving game, but very rewarding when you get through it. Uh, <clears throat> Just Cause 3, I just mentioned that I got all the DLC for that. Strange Brigade, I got all the DLC for that. Destroy All Humans, when I bought my special edition, because they switched it on me at the last minute, I didn't get my code for the skin. So I spent the 10 bucks and got this code for all the different skins you can change the little alien into. Metro Exodus, I got the two wonderful expansions for that, because I recently got that game as well. Uh, so that's it. That's pretty much all my DLC. Oh, a little bit more. More DLC. Or more digital games. Metro Metropolis Lux Obscura. Really kind of a very adult, very spicy little scenes in it. Kind of animated things. It's, it's, it's like a little like a card game you play, but with these really cool graphics. It's very cool. Uh, Stranded Deep. Another kind of a survival. They've been working on P the, this game on PC forever. And I'm just happy to have it for the um, PS4. Zombie, which was a Zombie U game, I got the, finally bought the Zombie game on sale. Um, so I've got the PS4 version of it, uh, which was called Zombie U on the, the old uh, Wii U. Uh, Fallout Shelter it was a fun little, kind of like a phone game that I bought uh, Xbox for the Xbox One, really cheap, like $4 or something. Uh, Forza Horizon 3. Now that's something I was going to try to get a physical game of that and I still want to get one. But it, it was about to be delisted. Like that week I had like four days left so I just said fuck it. I bought the digital version and I bought all the Hot Wheels expansions and the Arctic Mountain or whatever those other ones were. So <clears throat> all the car packs I want I bought everything for that for the Xbox One. So that's it for my that's my list of um, uh, DLC and digital games I've bought as well. Um, there's other things to go over. There's a new 007 trailer, which is, looks really good. For, I think it's IO Interactive. 
the Hitman dev. They're going to work on that. That I'm very excited about. Um, uh, I was going to mention the Christmas. We had a wonderful Christmas year. We had a big snowstorm because of that. Some things changed with our vehicles, which I'll talk about. Um, we lost David Prowse. This is a little rest in peace. David Prowse, who played Darth Vader. Chuck Yeager, the famous pilot, which I used to love his Chuck Yeager's advanced flight trainer on the C-64, one of my favorite games. Uh, the guy had just tons of enemy, you know, kills. Um, Hugh Key Burns that played the toe cutter on the original Mad Max and then played um, the main villain at the Fury Road movie. He, he passed away, sadly. And then one of my closest friends, Ralph Alegria, my karate teacher, my mentor, and one of my very best friends, I may not be here today if it wasn't for him. He really had a lot of impact in helping me get my life screwed on right and for me to, you know, get over my last marriage. And you know, he was very, very helpful. He, he died. I don't know how he died. He was too young. He was only 71 years old, but he was in very good health. And I'm suspect as to what happened to him. But I'm trying to find out. And I felt terrible to find out that he's gone, that I never had a chance to. I saw him at... When I took my Corvette to the last Corvette car show in El Segundo, I saw him, my wife and I, Laura, and I introduced her to him, and we had a wonderful talk, and I just haven't caught up with him since then. I feel terrible that he's gone now, and I just, so don't, if you have friends in your life that they've made an impact on you, stay in touch with them, really, just stay in touch, because when the, the void that they leave when they're gone, and then you realize you never had a chance to talk with them again, it's just, it's a horrible void. And it's, that's another reason why I took some time off. I just I really been reflecting on my life, past and present, and <clears throat> there's people that really made an impact on my life, and he was one of them. But anyway, um, so, so the, we lost some, you know, some people I've noticed, just took note of, you know, over the last few months. Uh, Destroy All Humans 2 looks like they've kind of hinted that they'll be making a second one of those, kind of reboot. Indian, uh, Indiana Jones through Bethesda. That's, I'm very interested in see what they come up with that. I love that Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, which I can play digitally re redone on the um, Xbox One X. It's fantastic. Um, I'm going to get my consoles modded. I'm going to mod one of my fat PS1s. That's one of my highest priorities. And then to sort this P PS3 thing out, too, so I can keep my games. You know, you can't even get the Star Wars game, or not Star Wars, what is it? Um, I thought I had it here somewhere. The, um, oh, the Twisted Metal game. You know, you can no longer even get the updates for this and many other popular games. So if you want to update this, you can't even update it. It won't even connect for the up. There's a whole list of them I saw in a video. But I've been playing the Ferrari Challenge. This is a really hard game to find. Ferrari Challenge. Uh, it plays a lot like Gran Turismo. Very good graphics. The best of the Ferraris. I mean, the ones that I like anyway. Really nice. And then I get dissatisfied. I took back that 13 remastered game. And I'm just going to play this. And I already have it installed in my modded Xbox. So I'm just going to, I'm dying to, to play that one too. It's on my list of uh, one of the first games I'm going to play when I hook my modded Xbox back up. But anyway, <clears throat> so we got a few interesting games and things coming. Um, the Series X and PS5, if I can find them, I'll buy both of them now. I mean, the money I make is so good, I could, you know, easily get pick those things up on a weekend and pay for each of them. So I'm really anxious to get one. <clears throat> the guy that I work with, it's a big gamer, it's in his streaming. He also has a side job, part-time working for the GameStop in Nampa, the next town over. So he, he's, he just got a hold of a PlayStation 5, and I think he's got a Series X too, but I might he might be able to help me get a line on one <clears throat> when the time comes. So I'm still waiting for some games to come out for it, but in the next year or so, I'll definitely get one if I can find them and come across them. So that's pretty much it. My collection's almost over. I'm going to try to knock it out this year before the prices go up higher. I don't want to pay more than I already have to. Some of the games I want are getting up there, but I've got most of what I have. It might be literally 20 to 30 games left on my list. That's very doable. And if I don't get any of them, hey, I'm happy with what I've got. So that's it. So much for the gaming thing. <clears throat> well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my, <clears throat> you know, uh, past pickups videos and gifts videos. I wanted to share that. And plus a little, some news, you know, tidbits at the end there. Things that at the time I was thinking about new games coming out. And so, unfortunately, people that have passed away, including my, you know, friend and karate teacher, Ralph, which, uh, 
El Agria, my karate um, you know, sensei instructor, uh, just devastated to find out I never got to say goodbye. I just now I feel really bad I didn't stay in touch with him. But anyway, um, <clears throat> ending it on a positive note, I thought I'd just share with you what I've been playing lately. Now, when I had my surgery, I've been playing this. I got pretty far back and I've already beaten this twice, and that's Sniper Elite 3. And they just came out with the Sniper V2 Remastered, which I bought the day it came out. But I wanted to go back and play 3 again before I went back and to play this. So I've been really enjoying this off and on. This I keep returning to. This I've beaten a couple times, but I would like to play the new remastered one just to see how it's like. Um, and I've got the 4 too, which is highly recommended. One of my favorite series. You can always tell a video game I like if I play it all the way through. That's one you know, when you know that Dean likes it. So I've played all of the Sniper Elite games all the way through and beaten them and gotten good achievement scores on them. Um, the grid game, like I mentioned in my last video, this is really good. I've really enjoyed this. A lot more polished than I thought. I don't even know why there were mixed reviews on it. I honestly can't see it. Gorgeous visuals. The lighting is fantastic. The environments are really cool. And I've got like I've got a Challenger that's like my 2014 one. And I, I mean, fixed it all up, painted it the same color, but it's got all the race car graphics and, <clears throat> you know, extra... Um, aerodynamic, you know, spoilers and stuff like that on it, but I've really enjoyed playing this. Any game where I can drive the cars that I've either owned or own is pretty cool, but this is great. It's a good range of different types of race cars and racing all in one nice package, almost like a reboot in a way, but I highly recommend Grid. This is the one I'm, I could play off and on. Mad Max, like I said, I've got 17, 18 hours in this Xbox version. Uh, I've had really bad luck with the PS4 version. I don't know if it's just that or if all the versions have these issues, but I'm hoping it'll be different. The friends that have played it on the Xbox haven't had a problem, so the graphics are good. The controls are a little different. A few things are different, um, but it, it's very cool. I really am, am enjoying this, and it's just as a, my favorite go-to game. I just It's like comfort food. I feel right at home diving back in. Rage 2, I've actually gone back in and been playing and just exploring the land and getting in skirmishes. Very, very cool. So far, I am real. I don't understand what the negative reviews are on this. I think it's an outstanding game. I don't honestly don't see what the, all the, the negative fuss is over this, but it's very, very cool. Very well made. An interesting collaboration between it and Avalanche, who did Mad Max. Um, <clears throat> and you can see the Mad Max inspiration in this as well as some of like the Doom type, you know, really smooth, fast shooting and, and great detail of the foreground and the, of the weapons. I really like that in this. Very cool game. Um, Mafia, I started. I've got to get back to this. I played a few missions in the beginning. I was really hooked on it and enjoying it. Um, you saw a sense in my, <clears throat> at the video that I just showed the older section of. My friend Mario found me the actual trilogy, which is nice in a physical form which plays here in the States as well as the UK where it's from. But uh, <clears throat> i got to get back to this. This is such a great game. Really enjoy this. Um, Far Cry 4 is another one. I, I've got Far Cry 5, which I bought the deluxe edition with all the DLC. I even have the strategy guide for both of these. But it, before I wanted to play this, I felt guilty. I said I was really enjoying, you know, I got about 36, well, now I've got closer to 40 hours in this now. Uh, just under 40 hours, I think, and i, I got to get back into this. This is so good. I really want to finish this before I play 5. And then I got the New Dawn, and I don't want to play New Dawn until I finish this. So these are another series where I like to play them all the way through. I, I love Fallout, I mean Far Cry 3 quite a bit. And Far Cry 4 didn't disappoint. The little mini personal helicopter thing, is uh, gyrocopter, is very cool. It's, it really makes this game and takes it up. An, another dimension from the third one, I think, in my opinion. Especially when you get the rocket launcher from above and you can take out a convoy. I mean, I've got that mastered that gyroscope or gyrocopter thing. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> Cold War, I've got to finish it. It's another game where I, I just am surprised. I probably because of the pain I'm in. I can only play at the time when I first started playing this. I was still kind of struggling with my back. It's a lot better now, but I need to get back into this really is good and then solid rev sent me this terminator resistance this is another one i've got to finish it's really not that long of a game from what i understand and it looks so good now i think there's even a port for the playstation 5 for this and maybe the series x i'm not sure with slightly improved graphics or you know frame rate or whatever but <clears throat> i'm dying to get back to this 
I, I don't know if I showed this in earlier pickups or not, but this is a game that I, I found, and I want to get the second one too, but and that's this is the year one survival edition of State of Decay. This is a great game. I don't know why I never took the time to watch game reviews of this early on. I know it's an Xbox exclusive, but this looks really, really good. I like everything I've seen about this. This is like a really good RPG mixed with a big open world, you know, kind of action stealth type game. And the, I like the permanent things, like you can have people you can bring with you, and, and if something happens and they get killed, that's it, they're permanently dead for the rest of the game. And I like those kind of dynamics that are in games, so this looks very good. This is an enhanced version that supposedly has better graphics and is not as buggy as the original one. Both this and the second, I guess, are plagued with bugs and issues. But So those are the games I've been playing and I'm looking to play fairly soon. So I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I just wanted to get a video out showing what I'm working on presently in the way of games. And um, I just saw today they got this Outer Worlds 2, the sequel to it. looks very, very good. There's a Chernobyl uh, Stalker 2 thing or something. I don't know if that's a PC only. I think that was a PC game initially, but that looks pretty interesting. There's a couple of interesting games, uh, new ones out there. There was some other game that I saw that looked really good. I can't, can't remember. My memory is not great. That's another story, but I had a whole list of things that I've already seen just in the last 24 hours from this E3, and I, I just I can't remember them to save my life right now. But anyway, that's a little smorgasbord, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you've liked from what you've seen at the E3, what you're looking forward to in playing. Uh, God, my God, every game coming out is going to be a female protagonist. It's another, another rant or lecture or whatever, but... <clears throat> I, I still am kind of in, in frustrated with that and try, typically will stay away from a lot of the games that have, you know, a female lead in that. It's just, I, I don't know if it's pandering or what, but I see way too much of it. And it's just, I like to play as a role playing. You put yourself in the Duke Nukem's, you know, place. You're playing Spec Ops the line to play as one of the military special forces guys. I like to put myself in the, the role of the person that I'm playing in the game. <clears throat> Uh, the, again, Tomb Raiders I've never had a problem with because it was so unique and different in the, in the PS1 days. So because it was the original female protagonist, and my wife loves to watch me play those, and I pretend I'm playing my wife as a character, I guess, which is weird, but still cool. <laughs> still a little bit more removed from, you know, being immersed in the game, but <clears throat> still cool. But anyway, yeah, that's, there's something for everyone. You know, there's definitely some good uh, games coming out. Oh, the Forza Horizon game. I think it looks like it's down in Mexico or something. That looks pretty pretty colorful. And a few other interesting ones. For the life of me, I can't remember I was going to bring up in this. But um, Anyway, that's it. Let me know what you're playing, what you've looked forward to. If you have any recommendations, Dean, you got to play this game. It's fantastic. Let me know in the comments. <clears throat> I'd love to hear back from you. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your games and your game collections.